the life you live ain't like the life that I'm living You never understand what's going on No, the world you in ain't like the world that I live in You never understand what's going on Yo, what's going on? NPC The Game here. Gabriel Carbo. She came have... in the building. <laughs> we have the legend himself, Master Creator, Vente Tres 23. What's up, Master 23. Creator? Three. Don't forget the 23, man. What's going on? Man? Oh, on. man. We're about, to, we're about to ride out on these side missions, right? Yeah, we might as well, well, man. Might as well. We might as well. Because there's so much opportunity on these side missions. Hey, sometimes, sometimes when there ain't nothing else to do and you ain't on the main mission, what you gonna do, man? Mm -hmm. You gonna get on that side mission? So side missions all day, bro. Oh, we already have we already have people in the chat. Let's see. Okay, well, what's up? On code twenty four seven. What's up, bro? Thank you, bro. What's going on two four seven. So the NPC, the game, best side mission episode. You should do these missions as soon as possible, right? The NPC, NPC the game is filled with amazing side quests. And you can play at home, right? So we're going to hit up, we're going to use this number, the city gem generator, randomly see what's up on these side missions. All right? Let's see. Let's see what we got here. Random box. Random. Ooh, screen sharing. Oh, here we are. We already have it. At, there we go. And let's see. One. Generate. Let me hit generate. Oh, shit. This is a good one. <laughs> you see that, creator? Hawthorne, okay. California. <laughs> Hawthorne, California. Let's find That's out. LA. LA. Big oh, you already know about it? Okay, if you yeah. know about it already, man, yeah. tell me a little something before we click on this, man. All a I know quick is... quick fact you may know about Hawthorne. <laughs> well, current fact is I think the, the homie Crip Mac, C-Mac, um, lives out there, allegedly. You know C-Mac? Yeah. It's in the Hawthorne. Yeah. And how long you been homies with him for, man? <laughs> that's the home of true life. Shut up. <laughs> true. That's the true life. <laughs> I haven't been I haven't been blessed to meet him yet. Uh C Mac, huh? So let's see what Hawthorne's about. Let's see Hawthorne. Whoa, turn that off. Let's see. Fun fact about Hawthorne. Oh, there's does it say eighty six thousand people live there? That's not very many, right? Damn. Let me see. It's like a village. Yeah. Hawthorne, California. Hawthorne is the let's see. It's a, it's a city in Los Angeles metropolitan area in southwest Los Angeles. Southwest County, Los Angeles. Uh, oh, it's, yeah, it only has 89,000, bro. Wow. Why do you think that is? It's a little uh it's a tech spot for people or what? Ah oh, man, maybe it's like a passing through type of thing. Type of thing. All right, let's see. I I, I know they have gang activity there. Heavy. Let's see what the news got. Let's see. Hawthorne local news. If anybody listed it has it's from Hawthorne or has any has any uh experience with Hawthorne, uh, hit us up. Wow. Look at the first thing that comes up. Are you ready? Let us know if you trust the news, too. Yeah. It says, suspect arrested in connection with fatal shooting at Hawthorne Restaurant. Straight off the bat. Oh, you got to share that screen, bro. You're going to have to share that screen. Bro. You can't see it? Let me see. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My bad. My bad, my bad. Let me see. Stop screening. Share screen. Here we go. Mm -hmm. An arrest in this case. Now they have. 
Now at 1230, breaking news. A suspect has been arrested in the shooting death of an off-duty security guard in Hawthorne. The deadly shooting happened at a burger restaurant overnight. KTLA Vice Green Winter live now in Hawthorne with details on how... Burger restaurant? Is there a lot of activities, shenanigans going on in late night burger restaurants? Man, that's Back messed in. up, man. Yeah, trying to, trying to get a burger. Yeah. The suspect was found. Kareen? Glenn Hawthorne PD confirming a short time ago that yes, they have in fact made an arrest in this case. Now, they haven't released um, details, specific information on that suspect, but they said that they were able to track down that person in a neighboring city and that this was based on witness statements and also from some evidence that they collected. It's like Ben's Burgers, man at the scene. Here's a closer look at where that shooting occurred in the parking lot of a restaurant. This was just after two o'clock this morning. That 45 year old man died from gunshot wounds after getting into a fight with that suspect. This occurred right in front of fat. Oh, that's sad. That's probably a relative right there, huh? The mom. Are you there, creator? Yo. Master creator. Yeah, I'm still there. What happened? Did the news stop? Uh, oh no, no, no! I'm saying like that's. I said that's probably a relative right there. And you see her. Uh -huh, right. Let me see. Yeah. After two o'clock this morning. That can you see everything? Okay. Yeah, I can see everything now. That 45-year-old man died from gunshot wounds after getting into a fight with that suspect. This occurred right in front of. Like a mom right there, huh? Damn, that's mom. Up. Yeah. Fabulous Charbroiled Burgers on Rosecrans Avenue. Fabulous Charbroiled Burgers. That's a Rosecrans like goes to South. Well, you tell me it started off as a fight and then friends identify the big... That's what, what they say. Like. That's what they say. Yeah. Suspect. This occurred right in front of Fabulous Charbroiled Burgers this morning. That 45-year-old man died from gunshot wounds after getting into a fight with that suspect. This occurred right in front of Fabulous Charbroiled Burgers on Rosecrans Avenue. Friends identify the victim as Eddie McAllister. We spoke with the victim's daughter, who arrived later at the scene and had to be consoled. Imani McAllister said that she received a text from her father around midnight saying that he was going to be heading over to that restaurant to pick up some food that he ordered. McAllister told us a few hours later, around 2.30 a.m., she received a frantic phone call from a family member informing her that someone had shot her dad. Like, I just could have never thought I was going to lose a parent, let alone behind a gun. You know, I lost my brother to a gun in 2011, and here it is again. Those 24-hour burgers, those food food places are wild, wild west, huh? It's crazy because, like, if somebody's 45 years old and you still feel like you need to shoot them, like you can't handle it, like, regular squabble. Right, right. You would you think, think like you know, younger cat? yeah, you would think like Damn. they try to like intervene peacefully. So again, Hawthorne police um, announcing an arrest in this case. They have not released details on that suspect. We're hoping to have another update in the next hour. So that was two months ago. So it's hard though. Like I, I've been really trying to work on that. Like not trying to blow up on people, especially because. Over here in Taiwan, there's a lot of little streets, and everyone's riding bikes and scooters, and a lot of a lot of road rage opportunities, man. But uh, it's better just to let it slide, right? For it's sure. always better to let it slide, man. Yeah, it's pride. It's a pride thing, though. It's a pride thing. People don't want to be disrespective. Well, who's getting disrespected, really? Okay, let's see. Oh, there we go. Three days ago, teen girl dies after alleged fight with bullies at South LA High School. Damn, bro. Damn. You, a six some bad shit going on over here, bro. I, I, I'm telling you, got God. No, yeah. ain't got no good news, huh? <laughs> Jesus. You got an old person that got, I mean, older, middle aged person that got capped, and now a, a teen girl with her whole life ahead of her? year old girl dies just days after all those let me see you a 16 year old girl dies 16 man 
fucked up. Yeah. Look, look, is that a prom? Look like she's wearing just a regular fit going to the swap meet. Just days after a vicious fight at school, suffering severe head injuries, the teen's mother says school officials were warned about the ongoing bullying and the violence targeting her daughter, but she says they did nothing. KTLA's John Finolio is live in Hollywood with the tragic details. John? Sharon, Micah, this is such a heartbreaking story. 16-year-old Shaylee Mejia is being remembered as a kind and loving girl tonight. And while the circumstances surrounding her untimely death remain under investigation, her mother believes it was the result of bullying at her high school. We have to warn you, some of the video in this report is disturbing. <laughs> Repeated brutal beatdowns inside a South LA school bathroom. Allegations of campus bullying. I'm scared, mommy. And now a mother's grief following the death of her 16-year-old daughter. <laughs> Maria Juarez believes her daughter, Shaylee Mejia, suffered brain damage during this fight at Manual Arts High School on March 5th. Captured on cell phone video. Just the other day, man. Video. Oh, Shaylee can be seen hitting her head as she's violently slammed against a stall in the girls' bathroom. <laughs> Maria says this wasn't an isolated incident, pointing to another video of a bathroom brawl in December that her daughter shared with her. For months, she says Shaylee complained of bullying, even began showing up at home with bruises. Yes. And then you complained? Yes. And what did the school do? Nothing. She claimed... Is it, man, I mean, I, there wasn't too many fights like that at my high school, but did the schools really do shit back in the town? No, nah, not really. Yeah. Yeah. Claimed she reported it to school officials and L.A. school police, but nothing was done about it. My daughter, she passed away uh, Friday in the morning, like uh, 8.41 in the morning. Very young mother. That was on March 15th. Maria says before Shaylee died, she was eager to go to a birthday party with friends on Saturday, March 9th just four days after that bathroom attack on the 5th. And in the uh, days leading up to the party, she says Shaylee complained that her head was pounding, but didn't want her mom to worry and risk losing work hours. My daughter, she has like a headache. Uh, and she said, mom, um, I don't want to tell you something. I don't want to like um, wanna say. Uh, I hey, speaking of a headache, I'll do a side mission right now, if you don't mind, brother. Go ahead, uh, go ahead, man. You hear about Sad Guru? No, he had like, what, what, he had like, what happened with that? He had like brain swelling. Yeah, yeah, he had this emergency surgery the other day. As uh his brain was bleeding and shit. Supposedly he's recovering now though. Right. I worry about that. This it was the last time she would see her daughter alive. Later that night, at the party, Shaylee collapsed. Maria was Man. told she had fainted and that a friend rushed her to the hospital. Doctors said she suffered from a fatal hemorrhage due to brain injuries. God. The doctor, he said like that he has um, a lot of uh, damage for the head. On the day her daughter died, Maria says Shaylee's friends began coming forward with the latest fight <clears throat> footage. Maria says she presented the video to school officials, but claims no action was taken. Everybody know, everybody know when, when my daughter like uh, hit the head, everybody, the teachers too, everybody know. The LAPD yeah. says they are investigating claims that Shaylee may have fallen down a flight of stairs the night she was admitted to the hospital. The school has issued a statement expressing condolences, but so far no word from any officials as to whether anyone is investigating the mother's claims that Shaylee was dealt a fatal blow on the f during that fight on March 5th. The family has set up a GoFundMe to help raise money for funeral costs and other expenses. If you'd like to donate, you can find a link under this story on our website, ktla.com. I'm John Finolio. Share Micah, back to you. Okay, that's, so that's two horrible stories. Let's see, yeah. Let's see right. if we can get something else. Rest in peace, girl. Oh, this is from 11 months ago.
<laughs> Jesus. Hi, Kareen. Yeah, the CHP is investigating specifically. They want to know. Just run away. The tire sends car flying into the air. If something on that truck was modified, they want to know when it was last serviced and what was done. And that could determine exactly why this tire came flying off the truck. Flipping oh. in the air on the freeway, a car slammed by a 25 pound tire. Oh. High impact roll of occlusion. I mean, it just shows. What is that? A PT cruiser hit? Jeez. The truck. So what do, you, what do you see going on here? Maybe they changed the tire and didn't put it on correctly or what? Man, that, I don't know, bro. Was all the lug nuts missing? I don't know. That's what it means. Look, watch this. Tire came flying off the truck. Flipping in the air on the oh. freeway, a car slammed by a 25-pound tire. High impact roll of occlusion. I mean, it just shows you... Yeah. Um, you know, when you're simply driving down the freeway, um, some pretty dramatic things can happen really quick. Despite the violent crash, the 29-year-old driver of the Kia from Panorama City was not seriously hurt and was able That's to crazy. walk away from her toll. You see that the insult to injury, the tire hits him again in the back. <laughs> Can't get it done. Seriously hurt and was able she to was walk she had away her from her total. On, I know. That Steve you, had to save her life right there. Yeah. You would think maybe she would have got crushed too. Cause it looked like it landed on the on the on the roof, right? Like, let's see. 25 pound tire. High impact roll. Slammed by a Oh yeah, okay. Dodo in Chatsworth, the tire came off the front driver's wheel of the Chevy truck and slammed into the Kia. The Kia spiraled through the air. The tire bounced across the freeway and hit the car again. All of that captured on another driver's Tesla camera. Oh, it landed There's on the no indication either driver involved in the accident was speeding or driving recklessly. So for now, the CHP is investigating. It is unlikely the driver of the truck, a 24-year-old from Canoga Park, will face criminal charges in this wild wreck. I know there's some reports that the party was trying to flee the scene, but you simply pull into the right shoulder, which if you can safely do that, because you don't want other cars hitting you. By the way, the Tesla that recorded that video also was damaged from all of the flying debris. That driver also not injured. We were in touch with him today, but he did not want to talk about the crash. We're live in Woodland Hills. I'm Sandra Mitchell, KTLA 5 News. Share, Kareen. Okay. That still is up some pretty brutal news, man. We might as well move to the next city, man. This is... <laughs> Let's see this real quick. Hot storm. Let's see, cops episode. Nah, it's not doing that. Let's do another city. Uh, okay, let's go. Generate, generate. Oh, Bellingham, Washington. Okay, Bellingham, mm -hmm. Washington. I you never heard, heard of, of that one either, man. We better find out. Population eighty-two thousand. Damn. Mm -hmm. What's up with these low uh, populated cities popping up? Huh? Oh. Let's see. That was okay. Oh, it's a Seattle news. Uh, King Five Seattle. Let's see. March 22nd, 2014. It was a lazy Saturday morning in the Steelhead Haven neighborhood. It's a... No. That's clearly a contentious issue. Bellingham City Council votes to make public drug use an arrestable offense. An arrestable offense. Well, this legislation was... 
at clearly a contentious issue. This legislation was introduced last month and rejected by the city council. They wanted assurance that drug users could be referred to treatment before giving police the ability to make arrests tonight. Many council members made it clear that this may not be the perfect legislation, but it passed nonetheless. Bellingham is now the latest Western. Bro, is that a DMT pipe? <laughs> 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 that might be a crack pipe. Man. You think so? Look at those. Can you, Master Creator 23, can you describe those hands? <laughs> <laughs> Are they rough? They've been using, man. They've been using. Uh, it's like his nails been used as a screwdriver. <laughs> <laughs> Washington City to criminalize drug use in public. Though the mayor making it clear, handcuffs. Holy shit, look at that. Where are the legs? You see that in the in the wheelchair? What is that in the wheelchair? I can't even see. It. Yeah, you see that. that. I'm trying to make it the full a, screen. So. They made the uh the what you They blurred out the person's face, but it's like a person sitting in a wheelchair with no face. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh shit. You see, you see that a lot on the, in the tenderloin, huh? Shit, I haven't been to the TL. Matter of fact, I have, and it's bad, but, you know, I, I don't pay attention to that part of it, but, yeah. Okay. What do you, what do you pay attention to? You just don't try to pay attention. You try to mind your own business and just keep, Smart. keep on moving. Smart it, man. It's, it smells like piss out there. Uh -huh. You can get into some shit out there, and, you know, you just yeah. gotta move and groove at that point. Bro, this place is called, this is 82,000 Billingham City, but it looks pretty fucked up kind of already. Aren't the only solution. Not hoping to push people into, into the dark. We're saying that fentanyl should not be smoked in downtown streets. Or should they smoke it? Uh, you know, that's, that's 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 that. that Fetty Wap. Mm. Fetty Wap, that's what they call it. <laughs> Baby, will you come my way? <laughs> <laughs> you should ask to know i don't ever trust no because it's dangerous for the individual that's smoking it and for the public bystanders and it's scaring people away mayor seth fleetwood is behind the city legislation he says city numbers report an average of more than two man they show everything that's what it looked like bro that's what that fatty looked I like that's, that's crystal meth <laughs> two overdoses a Allegedly, day how they gonna, how they so gonna talk far. about Fetty and show pictures of some C Mets, man? What's going bro, on? Like, it gets worse, bro. They have like DMT stories and they show like meth pipe. I mean, they show like um crack, like That's as the B roll saying, marking a 70% increase news, over the last news year. Be messing up, man. Yeah. He says stopping drug use in public would address this issue. Head on. We're proposing a means by which behavior that should not be happening in public places, which is the domain in which we have some control, can um, get altered. Council shot down the idea last month, and some members opposed the passage again Monday night. These human beings who we have failed on every single level in our nation. To I feel like I know her or something. <laughs> right, right? <laughs> she's very passionate about her uh, you must know a passionate person man. yeah to leave them on the street self-medicating with whatever cheap drug they can get their hands on to try to numb the pain this is about moving them to dimmer streets regardless the ordinance passed the motion carries five two this is the city works to create a specialized drug court it focuses on treatment over jail but i mean isn't that normal i thought like if you're caught doing drugs in most places in america you they can arrest you the police yeah i think they kind of changed that law because there's, there's uh, been so many people doing it and it's probably they've probably been crowding up the jails and shit Okay. But now they're going to change it back here, right? And not being able to house them and shit. But yeah, but now it looks like they're going to change it back. The jails are going to get more crowded. Yeah, it's going to stink. You go it's going to stink, man. It smells like the tenderloin. From fentanyl use. <laughs> the system that cities like Mary's... Look at this guy. 
about to fall over. Bill and Lake. You always got to have a bike, a backpack, and your pants like uh, at your thighs. He's on the heroin lean, look like. <laughs> or already <laughs> Lee with it, rock with it. What are you using? And we are looking at yeah, rock with it. He's looking for the rock on the ground. Is he in that heavenly state or what? Yeah. <laughs> Nirvana. For the legislature to create. A... What's he picking up? You see that? <laughs> a broader fix for our state. We think that's important. But what we're doing here is working. Bellingham now following their lead. Hopefully, Bellingham now following their lead. Hopeful that an arrest can be just one more tool in helping to prevent a fatal overdose. This effort on our. Where's that cop? Where's that one? We think that's important. <laughs> what... Do you think this guy's ever beat any black or browns? Let's hear him talk first. Let's hear him. What we're doing here is working. Bellingham now. Sounds kind definitely. of. Definitely. <laughs> he said definitely. <laughs> Important, but what we're doing here is working. Bellingham now following their lead, <laughs> hopeful that an arrest can be just one more tool in helping to prevent a fatal overdose. This effort on our part locally is just going to provide us with another tool. This news station is garbage because they don't have the person's name that's talking underneath. Look at that mm. trash. Where Your city's news is trash. Going, man. They hiring well, all the wrong people that's fucking off over there. I mean, that's what that is. All that money is that funny is going to that Bill Cosby sweatshirt sweater that he's wearing. <laughs> <laughs> that we can use that may give some of the it looks like he's like tonging or something, maybe. These people an off ramp to sobriety <laughs> and a better <laughs> right? life. <laughs> By state law, a drug user must be warned twice and offer treatment options. I told you, put that pipe down. This is your first warning. One more time, I'm going to arrest you. <laughs> Before they can be ticketed. It's a misdemeanor offense. That's expected to change this summer as the current law will expire. And the state ledge will consider a bill which would make public drug use an arrestable offense. That bill has Damn. passed the Senate. It's waiting for a vote in the House. Lock them up, right, Crater? Man. Oh no, man. Yeah. You don't know. Yeah. Might as well not. <laughs> like, you might as well help them out. Move them to some type of community. We'll move them to this community right here from a month ago in Billingham. Mac, it's done. Yeah. Mac makeup chick. and trash mark the entryway tents and trash mark the entryway to what neighbors call an extensive homeless camp that reaches back into the woods i think it goes uh like uh from right over there in the woods to uh those apartments are probably hella many huh yeah they look like they could give me look, for sure. look at that stretching all like, you like i'm like meet me in the meet me in the parking lot let me pick up that sack <laughs> almost right behind or where my apartment is and the expansive size comes with extensive problems you never know what one of these criminals are going to do holy shit look at this guy damn look at this beauty he called them criminals off the back though he said, well, look how he looks man he looks like a like Gollum from lord of the rings all grown up let's put the <laughs> Bradley, let's see, let's see what he had to say about the criminals he's talking about. Criminals are going to do. It's not the homeless per se. It's the it's the addicts who get all aggressive, you know, and just do whatever they want because they're on something. I hear you. He would know too, right? <laughs> look at this lady. Wow, look at that cheekbone. <laughs> no teeth on the top. Oh, the explosions. Man. I've heard gunshots. Trash litters the area. Explosions. No sense, Holy shit, man. She said explosions, not just gunshots. In and around dozens of tents and other structures, neighbors say they've what even had people trespass. You think that was light M1000s or something? What you think that was going uh, Yeah. Uh, some pipe bombs. Maybe they didn't like that flag up there. <laughs> you see that? <laughs> oh. <laughs> into the apartment building that borders the camp, and one group broke into a community room at the complex. Well, what it was was homeless people. They had broke out. Kelly Todd. 
the back door <laughs> and went in there and were <laughs> huffing paint cans and oh. you know drinking. Neighbor oh, said, "Shit, damn. Like, huffing paint cans. They still doing that, man." Yeah, it was a wild Saturday night. Yeah. They do that here. I see some of the some of these this one couple, they literally ride around on their bike with like paint fluid in the in a plastic bag and huff it as they're riding Man. their bike. Yeah. And of course they want to talk to me and shit. It's like I don't know why I attract <laughs> these weirdos. <laughs> and they have complained about the safety issues for months, but the camp only seems to get bigger. It would be nice to be able to open probably because I'm not taking your advice. When you said like just keep your head, you know, looking forward, don't Try to, you know, give your attention to. But what they speak English too, or what? They say like, "Hey, hey," not really. But when they see a foreigner, <laughs> when they see a foreigner, they may think, I don't know, they might think they uh, it's showtime. In my windows without you know hearing yelling and one guy with an air horn. A major challenge. Wow, they, okay, let's let's break it down. There's gunshots, criminals. Explosions and now air horns and paint huffing. Damn. God damn. They must be watching soccer games out there or something. Every time they score a goal, they celebrating. Go. Challenge with this camp, though, is that it is on private property and the owner isn't taking any steps to secure or clear the land. Earlier this week, Bellingham city leaders took the early steps to begin clearing the camp by voting to file a nuisance abatement action against the owner, who property records show is from Taiwan. That vote oh, means the city shit. has legal oh, recourse to no. recover the costs bruh. of clearing and securing the lot. By... Uh, damn, bro. Ain't that a crazy sink, bro? Yeah, yeah. Taiwan? To recover the costs <laughs> of clearing and securing who property records show is from Taiwan. That <laughs> means the city has legal recourse to recover the... He's going to make a night market there, bro. He's just waiting for the proper investors, <laughs> co-investors. Costs of clearing and securing the lot by placing a lien on the undeveloped land. Neighbors say the changes can't come fast enough. I've seen them take bodies out of the woods right over here before they put the... Bro, I, I'm being critical of the, the content creators of this news station. K O M O news. Look at this, bro. What they put these end cre uh, credit things like five minutes, like uh, 50 seconds before it ends, blocks the whole video. Rocks up, you know, to keep them out. Joel Marino, Como News. Como. Como te llamas. Okay. Pretty good story. Oh, here we go. Taiwan Police have identified a man whose body washed ashore over the weekend. You may remember this happened early Sunday morning between Taylor Dock and Boulevard Park. Valley and police have identified. You ever seen him before? He looks different, right? You see that creator? Is that, is that the same guy? Who? Who that? This is a body. This is body washed up and bring him. And press play on it again. Bellingham police have identified him as Henry Howard King. They say he was shot multiple times, but they're not too sure who was responsible. So take a look at these mm -hmm. photos. The department is asking if you frequent the area, if you've had any contacts with Mr. King, to please call Bellingham police. Detectives want to speak with you. They're looking for more information about his relatives or friends that might help in this investigation. He looks, he probably was staying at that one place. Hmm, let's see. Popular news. So this is Seattle news. Emerald City Madness. Scenes of violence on the streets oh. of the Emerald City. The you see that? Scenes of violence on the streets of the Emerald City. The spotlight has stabbing? obtained video of a wild yeah. stabbing that led to an AK-47 <laughs> style rifle being fired in a Seattle homeless camp. Damn, they were out there rocking in Seattle, man. Right? <laughs> it's like the, the homeless NBCs on GTA. They got like hella like aggr aggressive. That's where Blue Flame from. That's, That's where Blue Flame from. 
<laughs> Scenes of violence on the streets Ooh, of the Emerald the spotlight has obtained video of a wild stabbing that led to an AK-47 style rifle. Bro, he's wearing camouflage too. Bro. Being fired in a Seattle homeless rocking. camp. Take a look as a van pulls up to drop off food for the people who are living in tents on 13th Street, just north of Dearborn, between the Goodwill and Public Storage Building. <laughs> are those homeless frequent spots usually? The Goodwill? And also the public storage. <laughs> <laughs> you can get training there, right? People can get training at the Goodwill, though. That's cool. You know, uh, what's his name? Bro Sanchez, the YouTuber. No. Oh, okay. He's know. like, he's like the Black Alex Jones. I think he started off working at the Goodwill. He was talking about. The guy bending over to pick up food is David Charles Burchak. His wife has been having issues with a woman named Arius Beckett Sumpay, better neck tech too. Known on the streets as Lady Gangster. Damn. <laughs> Yo. Sea Town is out there rocking right now. Apparently, Burchak told Lady Gangster she needed to move her tent. Instead, she sneaks up behind him and shanks him repeatedly with a knife. Oh, I thought that was a woman. A man, didn't you? Yeah, first. Yeah. So she, that lady gangster who stabbed? Instead, she sneaks up behind his wife has been having issues with a woman named Arius Beckett Sumpay, better known on the streets as Lady Gangster. Apparently, Burchak told Lady Gangster she needed to move her tent. Instead, she sneaks up behind him and shanks him repeatedly with a knife, Jeez. lacerating his liver, intestines, spleen, and severing a tendon in his arm. Lady Gangster then casually heads up the stairs that leads towards 12th Avenue and the Navigation Center. Meanwhile, Burchak runs to his tent and grabs his rifle. Wait, he, his liver and spleen's like punctured? I he guess, and that's then, probably why he was hobbling like that. What the, what's his health meter at right now, creator? How many percent? Shit, it ain't green right now. He's leaking, huh? But he said he casually goes against his 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 rifle in his tent. Managing yeah, not not a, not a hunting rifle, but yeah, no, it, he ain't even pop his trunk. He ain't even have a car to pop his trunk. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't even go back to the house or nothing. He just went to his tent He's, and got busy. He has a military mindset, bro. Art of war. You squeeze off a round before succumbing to his wounds. At oh, that point, died. his friend, who is yet to be identified. Wait, he. What? <laughs> oh, his partner slid through, too. Oh, man. He had a he had a chop, too. At that point, his friend, who is yet to be identified, takes the AK-47 style rifle and peels off a series of shots at Lady Gangster as she scampers up the hill. This is all happening at 10 a.m. on a Monday. Adam, who told us about the ordeal, was asleep in the... Shit, that's what time it is right now. It's <laughs> Monday at 10, 19 a.m. Oh. They out there getting active. <laughs> He's an active. Red tent you see there at the bottom left of your screen. Sir, this morning I woke up and literally two feet from my head, somebody got stabbed and someone took an AK-47 to the airport. <laughs> who that looks I mean, like? I'm you know, terrified. You see his teeth? Yeah. I'm terrified. He eventually pops out to get some food. <laughs> that, that him? Yeah. Like, like, go, like Groundhog's Day. Meanwhile, Burchak's <laughs> friend stashes the rifle back in Burchak's tent, where his wife tries to play keep away from the police, forcing them to get a warrant to access the tent. You need a warrant to access the tent? Yeah. Even though they can see the rifle clear as day Water's through the right, mesh of the yeah. tent. Yeah. Cops get a judge to issue a warrant for both Burchak and Lady Gangster's tent. They squat when they go to the bathroom, too, and the, by the dumpster, too. Burchak's wife then bites one officer and scratches another, drawing blood. Police Damn. eventually seize the... Whoa. Okay, that one that one assault rifle is pretty dope. Those other ones look like they're from, uh, like, Band of Brothers or Call of... No, what's it called? Medal of Honor? Remember that game? Yeah, they have some 
They have two old school ones right there. AK-47 style rifle and two bolt action guns. Lady Gangster, who stands out because of that huge neck tattoo, is still on the lam. This isn't her first run in with the law. She was already on a felony no bail warrant for escaping community custody after being convicted of another stabbing in 2019. Now, she's got a half million dollar warrant for her arrest for this assault case that she's charged in. It's just another day on the mean streets of Seattle with shootings, stabbings, and bitings. Stay safe. Bitings, man. Then he tried to make it sound all exciting like it was a joke or something. Right. <laughs> Action-packed, cool movie. <laughs> Action-packed, cool movie. Here you go. New Zealand Wu we are also learning new details about a shooting at Silver Lake in Snohomish County yesterday. Everett police now say the man who was shot has died from his injuries. And witnesses to the shooting say that... Is that a woman? She looks like she's a mix. A Eurasian. The man shot had been chasing <laughs> families with weapons and striking people before a bystander pulled a gun, shooting him twice. Q13 News reporter Steve Kiggins has the latest from Silver Lake. This incident happened... Holy... You ever seen a reporter look like that? <laughs> you like the daylight. bench about 300 pounds right there, man. He's a strong man. Yeah. That's Steve Kiggins, David Goggins' cousin. Not walking the sidewalks, enjoying the park with their families, even fishing here at the lake. That's when police say a man who was walking his dog became aggressive and violent. Hey, I mean, it's kind of unheard of folks running around chasing old women. Wait That's a minute. What, police say. <laughs> what, kind of, <laughs> what kind of Seattle accent is that? God damn. You hear that? Seattle yeah, walking. The man who was walking his dog became aggressive and violent. Hey, I mean, it's kind of unheard of folks running around chasing old women, holding grandbabies with a baton, screaming. <laughs> <laughs> it was just one of several people who police say intervened during a scare. What's his name? Howard Rohde was just uh, Howard Rohde. There he is. One of several people who police say intervened during a scary confrontation at Silver Lake on Tuesday. And he's screaming all these obscenities. And his friend snapped this image of him. And his friend snapped this image of Tuesday. And he's screaming. All you see his shirt creator? What is that? It says, we the people. There's an American flag. He's a truther. All these obscenities and his friend snapped this. In Holy shit! The guy has a, yeah, he has a baton. Like a like a revolutionary or civil war knife that goes on the end of a musket. Image of him confronting the man on the right, who police said had become aggressive to people walking along the sidewalk, including a woman and her grandchild. Brody said he stepped in to try and calm the situation, even after being struck by the baton and being pepper sprayed by the man. Look at the man's right hand. That device is Rody. Looked like it could have been a firearm. Police say that's when yet another bystander also <laughs> stepped in. But that person was armed and ended up shooting the man wearing the green shorts twice. Rody Damn. Rushed in to to his wound. Immediately removed his backpack, took his jacket off, tried to remove his shirt, and plugged his wound. Why? Because that's the right thing to do. The bystander <laughs> shot him. Shot him. <laughs> after I'm going to shoot your ass, I'm going to heal you right after. <laughs> He's a healer, man. He's an indigo adult. He says he then rushed in to tend to his wound. Immediately removed his backpack, took his jacket off, tried to remove his shirt, and plugged his wound. Why? Of course he had a backpack, right? Why? Because that's the right thing to do. The bystander who shot him was detained and interviewed by police, but he wasn't arrested. The case remains an active investigation. Ever police yeah, say no. the man in the green shorts was carrying something that looked like it could have been a firearm, but it wasn't. In fact, it rather could dispense pepper spray. Brody says he tried to calm tensions, but felt he had to protect others, saying it was the right thing to do. I'm really sorry. You know, I'm sorry. I didn't want the guy to die. I tried my best to do. Oh, he shot him? <laughs> damn. God damn. Do what we could until the police and first responders were able to remove him um, to take him to the hospital. I did my best to try to protect him and keep him alive, even after he pepper sprayed me and hit me. Okay. So again, police insist they've yet to make any arrests in this case. They've not yet forwarded any information to the prosecutor's office. The man who was shot and killed, he's not yet been identified 
by the county medical examiner's office. The dog he was walking is being cared for by animal control here in Everett. Now, anyone else who might have witnessed these events or has information about what may have happened, they're being asked to call the Everett Police Department. You can call their tip line at 425-257-8450. In Everett, Steve Kiggins, Q13 News. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. Man, cats be in heat, man. They be trying to go outside, man. Yeah. Trying to do them side missions. It, it might side. be a main mission. Who knows? <laughs> it might be a main mission. This is a side mission. This the two daughters were just trying to get some food. Investigators say they figured out what killed two teens in a home in Renton in December. The heartbreaking details now bringing even more questions. We're told it was starvation that killed the two kids. Fox 13 News reporter AJ Janivelle is live in Renton today. And AJ, what are you learning right now? Jennifer, even more disturbing and possibly tragic information coming out that the two girls were the first ones to die, according to investigators, meaning that their bodies sat in this home behind me for days. Now, we have video from when we were here on scene during that first investigation back in December. And what investigators said is when they were in the home, they found no food inside. Over the last few months, Fox 13 News has been speaking with the girl's mom over the last couple months. It's been a difficult time, but she tells us she had custody of the girls, but they became extremely religious during the pandemic and refused to see her. Investigators telling us the girls' bodies were found wrapped in blankets what? on the first floor and the father's body found in an All upstairs. right, all right. Let's, let's, let's get out of Seattle area, Washington. Damn, man. It's time to move on, right? <laughs> yeah, every time we get to that, we just got to move on. Even if the first news is like that, the first right. news, we move into yeah. another city, man. Yeah. Oh, wow. Look at this. Chalhoga Falls, Ohio. Woo. Cryo, what up? <laughs> Population 49,000, creator. Oh, shit. Another small city, man. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, my God. Missing Chalhoga Falls woman found dead. Husband charged with oh, murder. My. Look at all the stories are like that. Damn, bro. Yeah. Husband accused. Yeah, that's all the stories, man. What's the point of killing your wife, man? You might as well just get a divorce at that point. Oh, here we go. Here's one. Controversial middle school, middle school assignment raises concerns with some parents in Colahoga Falls, Ohio. Let's see what this one is. A racist armed police officer who has been accused of using excessive a racist armed police officer who has been accused of using excessive force. Kaga Falls Councilman Adam Miller says he was alarmed by the choices given students on a middle school questionnaire. The Hispanic clergyman who was against homosexuality. Um, I don't <laughs> really understand, you know, the intent behind that. The questionnaire. What? Is it like essay <laughs> topics? <laughs> yeah, well, back to what yeah. you said, though. Yeah, if you, there's no need to murder your spouse. Just get away from them, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Distributed to students at Roberts Middle School an exercise to choose which eight people you would save and which four you would leave behind. Which one you let a bird? Not only left behind, but if they're on fire, you wouldn't even piss on them. Well, you got the accountants with the, the substance abuse problem. Um, the 21 year old female Muslim international student. Tia Saljak's seventh grade. What? And which four? Okay, here. Okay, this is what it says, real quick. I don't know if you can read it. I'll read it. It says, People you would leave behind. Choose one an accountant with a substance abuse problem, a, mili a militant African American medical student. That's very detailed, right? Specific. Damn. <laughs> a militant what, what's going on in Ohio, man? I don't know, man. It says, Your task is to select eight passengers who will make the trip. Um, into space. Okay, wait. A 33-year-old <laughs> listen to this. A 33-year-old female Native American manager 
who does not speak English. How can a Native American not speak English at this point? Man. I don't know. They just, they just uh, never wanted to learn the language, I guess, hypothetically, right? Right. <laughs> they count an accountant's pregnant wife. <laughs> a famous what? Pregnant wife. Oh, this is because I guess the Earth's going to be destroyed. You need to take yeah, people I think off. I remember taking a test like this, too. I don't know really? if I was in middle school or maybe a freshman in high school, at least. Mm-hmm. It was a weird little test like this. I forgot. It was so you long take, ago. Do you remember any of the, the people? I remember it was specific like that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's like a way to just pick your brain, right? Do a psychological yeah. profile on you. Yeah. Is it a to famous see how novel? you judge. Because I guess it wants you to judge. Like mm-hmm. that'd be funny at a job interview. They ask you these questions. Who would you take? A famous novelist with a physical disability. <laughs> <laughs> a twenty-one-year-old female Muslim international student. An Hispanic clergyman who is against homosexuality. <laughs> That's crazy, though. Yeah. When the news ain't grim, it's some bullshit like this. Right. Super bullshit. Why can't we get, like, in-between story? It's not news. <laughs> North, east, west, south. Nice. F- Keep reading that shit, though, what that shit said. A, uh, a female movie star who was recently the victim of a sexual assault. Oh, oh man. Damn. Specific a ra- like a motherfucker. A racist police officer who has been <laughs> accused of excessive force. That's normal, right? <laughs> <laughs> you, you mean a police officer? Yeah. Yeah, a racist police officer. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this. A homosexual male professional athlete. Who's that? Like, Amici? Remember him from basketball? No, uh, no, no. There we go. An, an Asian orphan 12 year old boy. Right. What the hell, man? A 60 year old Jewish university administrator. Damn. Okay, so those are the choices, man. All Who right. So let's say your, your child was in middle school, bro. Yeah. And they, he had to take a weird test like this. How would you feel? I think it's funny, but I'd be like, "What?" I would want to know what's the purpose of this. Are you trying to like make a psychological profile? Like, <laughs> that's probably exactly what it is. Yeah, they want to see where yeah, exactly. They want to see how you shooter. judge. Yeah. yeah. And what is funny is that I, I say I only the only person I would take because he's valuable is the militant African American medical student <laughs> because he can shoot. Why not? He can shoot. And he can so shoot he you. Got, he got three he jobs. Can sh- he can heal you, right. shoot you. Right. And he, and he can shoot you, and then he can heal you because it's the right thing to do, remember? <laughs> <laughs> it's the right thing to do. Or you would leave behind. Well, you got the accountants with the, the substance abuse problem. Um, the 21-year-old female Muslim international student. Tia Saljak's seventh grade son among those given the exercise in class. He told me that Seventh grade, that's some pretty heavy shit. He didn't feel comfortable like answering any, like putting any numbers down on it because he says he felt like he was either being racist or judgmental. I, as an English teacher, I asked my seventh grade class essay question, what's the best gift you ever got for Christmas? <laughs> Those type of questions. Mental and yeah. I don't raise my You're kids You're a regular to teacher, man. Right. I mean, I'll ask him some other questions too. Like, have you ever... Um, has someone ever taken credit for some idea you ever had? Stuff like that. But not like this weirdo shit. <laughs> Councilman Miller contacted by other parents, raising his objection on Facebook. And I think the intent um, was to promote diversity and discuss these topics, which is a good thing. Right. Um, but I think just the, the actual assignment itself was where the the uh, contention was. The questionnaire apparently wasn't generated by Kaiga Falls School District or by he this teacher. He was having that interview. His voice was all shaky. He seems shaky. I'm so mad. Yeah. 
I'm so mad they did this. <laughs> he couldn't even, he couldn't even talk uh, straight. He was so yeah, mad. Yeah, contention was. <laughs> <laughs> Look at his glasses, too. He has those cop glasses. Right? Come on. Where the, the uh, contention was. <laughs> the question here, apparently. <laughs> They said it wasn't. They're like it wasn't written by a teacher or a councilman. It was written by Chat GPT. It wasn't generated by Kaiga Falls School District or by this teacher. Fox 8 News, in fact, found it on a diversity activities resource guide for the University of Houston. Oh, I want to get that. And on a web page for Illinois Wesleyan University. And some parents think <laughs> that while it may be appropriate for college students. Maybe not so much in middle school. <coughs> Kaga Falls Superintendent Dr. Todd Nichols tells Fox 8 he just learned about the questionnaire early Thursday. <coughs> this guy's going to be a weirdo, Dr. Todd Nichols. Let's see. And it is under investigation. Councilman Miller says he's spoken with a teacher who has signed it and describes him as remorseful. Uh, he was very rem remorseful. He apologized um, for, for any, I was gonna kill for any concern that... Look at him. He's angry, bro. <laughs> He's so angry he couldn't do the interview in his house. He had to I was going to mother these... that teacher, I tell you. It's not that big of a deal, right? <laughs> I mean, if you work through it, like, it's different if you don't give any guidance to your kid when they're doing the assignment. But if you're, like, you know, doing it with kind of, like, watching them and explaining the things to them, or, or like, oh, man, this is maybe some propaganda, you know, give you opportunity to teach teach them about like bias and all that type yeah, of shit. diversity right the, right yeah. his parents were upset about um and he said that he was going to remove the assignment and not use it in any future dates in kaga falls in kaga Falls. okay who is here oh there's people there's all the people in the chat i didn't even see that my bad what up chat <laughs> what's, what's up chat in? what's up chat ion oh ion my eye on AI, the Invictus King. What's up, bro? Good to see you. Oh, Lord. Good Lord. People are laughing at this shit. It depends on the city if you're jailed for sure. For the drugs, yeah? Shout out to UL. You're UL well Adams. In the building. Yeah, woo! Uh, right wing, comment from UL. Right wing feather attacking right wing feather. <laughs> I meant fighter, you maybe. You know, feathers attack each other on the same bird. <laughs> oh, man. Chicken hawking. Uh, comment from you, well, people and issues out here, they're caused by the by those they worship. You know? You stop worshiping so. people, gay. Gay real. Gay. <laughs> the only thing I... <laughs> the only thing I worship is the, is the, the <laughs> false sense of self. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get... Yeah, I over, I over that bro. every day, every day. Uh, well, people an issue because of the what they worship. Yeah, we got that. Thanks. Good comment. BGL, what's BGL going on in here? BGL in the building. What a feeling! They're tripping in these videos. I think they are tripping. They're super tripping, bro. Yeah, just be, just uh. Are you ready? Not long ago. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's see. The tripping. Are you ready? Oh, oh. There's the dudes. In the now y'all just What's talking to each other, huh? Yeah, okay. That's how y'all feel. You know what talk to us? Just for that, we're gonna that's do the depressing story. They, that's because you wasn't reading the messages. I didn't see, time, man. Bro. I was feeling these, man. I was feeling these. Up, man. Thanks man. for tuning in, yo. We just on our side missions right now. Yeah, we, we, we gonna get sideways. back to the main mission, but for now it's just a side thing. Sideways. Oh, we got some marijuana news up in Colorado Falls. Get it. I need to find the best way to learn math and science. Math and science. <sighs> It's brilliant.org. A group of Cuyahoga Falls neighbors worries how marijuana could affect their community. They're circulating a petition calling on the city to stop new dispensaries from coming to town. Others are hoping to welcome new business. News 5's Captain Ross explains the concerns and why they feel <coughs> a sense of urgency as Ohio voters decide whether to legalize recre recreational weed. 
On the leafy streets of this Cuyahoga Falls neighborhood. Well, somebody says something to creator. BGL. What did they say? What did that say? I don't know what he's talking about. What did what say? Well, well, check this out, bro. The leafy conversation is shifted to a new come up. These should not be in residential areas at all. They shouldn't be anywhere where homes and families and kids, young through young adult, are living. These neighbors tell us we they're troubled about what's high. coming. As construction is nearing completion on a medical marijuana dispensary on State Road in Chestnut Boulevard. We were all surprised about its proximity uh, to houses right here in the center of the neighborhood. Laura, Ed Sturkey. Dude, that guy's a hater. I mean, do you want that in your neighborhood, creator? You want a dispensary? A dispensary? A safe place to yeah. grab weed. Safe place for people to get their medicine. Next door, go to CVS. Sounds like a good plan. These neighbors tell us they're troubled about what's coming. As construction is nearing completion on a medical marijuana dispensary on State Road in Chestnut Boulevard. Nice neighborhood, man. What, you can put like a Wendy's there instead. We were all surprised. People act like people about... that smoke weed is like bad people. So I don't want them in the... Like, man, people that smoke weed is your regular, regular because, people. Because they are. A lot of them are. <laughs> I'm just kidding. They just always put that criminal element to it. So they go, I don't want yeah. people buying weed in this area, bro. Like, it's regular people, man. Yeah. You it's find a cycle in CVS before you find a cycle in a medical dispensary. I'm telling you. Everything's uh, locked up in CVS. Uh, to houses right here in the center of the neighborhood. Laura, Ed Sturkey, and Vic Polana are petitioning the city to halt more dispensaries from coming to town. They wonder if it could impact home values and bring more cars to the neighborhood. I don't know where all these people are going to go. So it's a real traffic. <laughs> so. were... It's like a drunk. Uh, <laughs> home yeah, values and bring more cars to the neighborhood. I don't know where all these look at that. <laughs> oh, Liver spots and shit. Come on, yeah. bro. Don't say that, bro. People are gonna at least his shirt is nicely pressed from the uh dry cleaner. I'll give him that. Go so it's a real traffic concern. And they worry the availability of look at that Camino wood weed products, Peralt here, whatever that any of that. That. Kiva, I've seen, Kiva that. I, I've seen that before, like chocolate yeah, bars. Chocolate. That. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look at this guy right here. He said, "Uh, this BGL, he's like, Wendy's is killing more people, for sure." It for was a sure. joke. Bro. <laughs> sure, BGL, man. Oh, man has, <laughs> what did he say? BGL, <laughs> oh, oh man, it's gone no already. Yeah, come on. He does. Yeah, don't say that, yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah, he probably needs weed, but don't say that. Mm. Let's see. BGL, all these people will be ordering <laughs> delivery. They probably will be. Uh, most definitely. If marijuana could send the wrong message to kids, especially as issue two brings the possibility of legalizing recreational marijuana. Really, that's my biggest push as a mom of two kids. I think about their future. I think about, okay, we go recreational and they're young now, but what happens when they're in middle school and or they're in high school and this is just everywhere? I actually cut them in half. Yeah, what happens with that? I mean, do you, I don't really want my, my son smoking weed. When yeah, he's there wasn't that, no when cannabis he's clubs when around when I was yeah. in middle school and shit, but that wasn't going to stop the motherfucker from wanting to smoke a joint. It's like right. kids is going to do what they have access to. But it doesn't even need to mean because it's a. It's just, if it's at the house, shit, he'll he'll grab it. Mom, if you got a joint, I'm smoking. That's how your kid gonna get weed. I, I learned it from watching you. I mean, that's commercial. Parents that use drugs have children that use drugs. Yeah. yeah. Some medical marijuana users have a different take. It's much like. Oh, he looks normal. He's covering up yeah. his glaucoma. Was his son? Oh, that's how you feel, bro. Yeah. <laughs> BGL got got me on that tip. Less impact of than alcohol ever was. Don Parks and Abram Benjamin used the drug to treat their medical conditions. Mainly, they used the drug to watch uh, Third Rock from the Sun and laugh. 
so I can sleep at night. Say they see no problem with dispensaries. It's flour. As long as they're regulated responsibly. As long as it's not like right next to us. Or within a this guy, why is his face so backwards? Like, I mean, like it's like he's pushing backwards, and it looked like he got hit by a shovel. Mile <laughs> of a school. Uh, I feel that. I don't fuck with those type of shirts, the, with the buttons like that, <laughs> yeah. like like Joe Rogan or something. That's better. Until the state road location opens, this is currently the only medical marijuana dispensary in Cuyahoga Falls. Bro, that place is probably popping, right? It's hella yeah. like people there. Only one. No one from the city was every available. Other business, man. People gonna come by the weed and shop at your store. You're right. Dude, don't worry. You're right. I put my little taqueria right next door. Mobile for an interview <laughs> Friday, but leaders there directed us to a web page answering frequently asked questions about dispensaries. It says there have been no issues reported in connection to the current dispensary, and it also says city council and the zoning board get little say in denying these types of legal businesses. If recreational marijuana is legalized, the city says the Ohio legislature would crap. <laughs> He's being brutal, dog. He said he looked like <laughs> you know, comment from BGL, he looks like from Rocco's Modern Life. With the rich. Oh. <laughs> a a a dingo. A dingo, a yeah. Dingo. Rocco was a dog or a wallaby, yeah. Comment from uh who is this? this one? UL. Parents don't use drugs. Have yeah, they use too much drugs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My parents want to make up for drugs. Yeah, same thing with my parents. My neighbor had my neighbor was dropping joints when I was like (laughs) eleven, so I picked that motherfucker up. (laughs) You pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. UL Adams, look at all those old ladies. They use to call the cops on kids (laughs) while they're smoking a joint. They just. I have a report to make. I told you, BGL. <laughs> I have a report to make. Let's go. After rules about how cities could regulate its distribution, the issue two language says local governments could pass ordinances to limit or prohibit dispensaries. Some neighbors are encouraging Cuyahoga Falls to take a look at those rules now so the community can prepare for what could happen. Neighbors are encouraging Cuyahoga Falls Look at these three. <laughs> Look at these guys. The, the full body camera. A bunch of dorks. Oh. Take a look at the, Look at the guy in the middle. Those rules now. Yeah. So the community can prepare. The fucking uh, black dude. He's like a wannabe broke ass uh, Neil Tyson DeGrasse or whatever his name is. <laughs> for what could happen we see a storm coming and I, there's not enough voices out there that are saying hey protect yourself protect your families fight for what matters news 5 reached out to the upcoming dispensary for comment but we haven't heard back because all by taiwanese man its website says it's set to open this fall in Cuyahoga falls Captain ross news 5. okay so what should we do? Let's go. To, you ready to bounce? Another side yeah, mission? Let's go to another city, man. Another random city, man. Oh, we're, we're about to learn a lot about everything. You know, all this, all these cities, right? We'll have the paperwork on them. Let's see. Generate. Oh! Classic. You'll love this one. Modesto. Modesto. <laughs> Modesto, California. Modesto, California. Yeah. Walk to Modesto. Ah. Big booty. Shake it, Bobby Retro. Christopher Columbus, Marco Polo, Solano County. Man, Sacramento. you got to show me the generator and show me it's really doing that, bro. Look, it's on the mm-hmm. screen. Oh, wait, hold All on. Right, let me bro. see. Let me put it up. Yo, trust me? All right. I get it. All after us, <laughs> I got warrants. I drive with no license or insurance. Look at that. Bam. Modesto, you see? All right, all right, all right. Okay. You, I walked to Modesto. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Chicken Mommy Retco. Comment. Google. Google. Let me see. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Comment from BGL. A gaggle of Karens out there carrying around. Even the dudes of Karen was with Karen. 
you well. They're circling. Modesto, local California news. But it's truly because they care. They care. They Karen. <laughs> we need help. We don't want that negative news. We're like little B, we want positivity. But find a positive one there. Oh, there's a mysterious creature. Oh, right, yeah, let's check that out, bruh. This is the quickest way to clear out stuck poop. Fiber oh. helps you poop, right? <laughs> nope. Uh, what I about drinking? I didn't know you were out. out. Just like poop, man. Oh, yeah, we speak, we speak American over here, too. All right. You want to help him load up? Just after sunrise, Chase Petley and a couple of his friends met up with the Edmonds family to head out on Lake Tahoe. <laughs> While most summer days the Edmonds sail around the top of the lake, today they were taking Petley out on a bit of an amateur research mission to see what lies beneath. Uh, I'm looking for anything that's interesting. I'm looking for uh, wildlife. I'm looking for... Um, uh, beautiful landscapes. I'm just looking for anything that would get people interested in Lake Tahoe. Petley has designed and built his own waterproof device to house a GoPro camera and powerful custom LED light, all capable of withstanding the pressure at Tahoe's deepest points. Okay, the Edmonds well, volunteered to take Petley to out of curiosity. And there's so many stories about what's science. at the bottom of Lake Tahoe. What'd you say? I said, you might know some quantum science going on. Seeing his little gadget, he made. It's a big brain right there. <laughs> it's a big brain right there. Let's see what he saw. And what's in here? And to have a oh, camera, camera go down right. and show. Camera go down. Plus, I, I'm on board. I want to know what's going on. When we get to the spot they want to explore, can you drop a pin on the GPS so we know exactly where we are right now? The first location near the crook in the state line. Ready, everyone? There we go. Let's go. Petley drops the missile-shaped device overboard and lets it fall to the bottom. So it's going to be going down this fast for a while. Here the lake is more than a quarter of a mile deep. The camera records the whole way down, the image getting darker blue as the sunlight disappears. It is so deep it takes more than four minutes to travel to the bottom. What we see when the camera yeah. gets to the end of the line may not look all that impressive. The muddy bed of Lake Tahoe but it's still an achievement. This is one of the deepest points right. of the lake ever seen by humans. All you need is a flashlight on that motherfucker now. If you got a big ass flashlight, his phone could probably capture more. Yeah. And like a light projector. Other submersibles and scuba divers have brought back underwater video and pictures from shallower points. The University of Northern Illinois tried to examine the fault line at the bottom of the lake three years ago, but never made it because of technical problems. Researchers and historians we talk to believe Petley is the first to record video from the lake's deepest levels. It's always exciting because every time we do it, everything's new. At 22 miles long and 12 miles wide, this is just one location. And Petley is anxious to explore more. Lake Tahoe's water. What'd you say? No, I didn't say nothing. Water may be renowned for its clarity, but at its depths, it still holds many mysteries and lore. Are there mob grave sites? unidentified creatures, underwater tunnels connecting it to other lakes. Finding the exact spot to look is the hard part. There's no live feed from the bottom, so they don't know exactly what they've got until they reel it back up. Before the second drop of the day, Petley's crew added a glow stick and a can of sardine. A glow stick, like from a rave? <laughs> <laughs> it might attract whatever lurks in top. Uh... Maybe it's a cat open a sardine. Yeah, I was about to say. I'm about to say. Come on, man. You're just dropping a... Might as well just say it. I'm dropping a piece Stupid. of metal down there. Hoping it might attract whatever lurks in Tahoe's deep waters. Camera is on. Lights on. Three, two, one. It drops in and the reel spins for several more minutes as it plunges to the bottom. What? Again, the bottom? more mud. But here we notice something swim by the lens. With the silt blocking oh, our view, shit. it's impossible to see clearly or identify what kind of fish Something it is. On another water. dive, though, Petley's camera caught this. We found a large fish uh, while we were videotaping at 1,100 feet, and uh, we don't know exactly what it is. Fish researchers oh, said while the animal looks remarkably shark-like, including the way it moves, experts at UC Davis believe it is most likely a very large lake trout. 
Petley is hoping to expand and refine his project to explore yeah, more of the lake bed. The Bro, the way they the way they marketed this story, I, I, I was waiting for like the Loch Ness monster shit. Yeah, you know how they click bait us, man. They don't got us, bro. Dude, that story they has got like you, bro. million You're the one views. Controlling it, so they got you before they got me. So that, they, they, they got, got you. They end up getting that right bro. along. <laughs> The only, the only, um, this is a mysterious creature right here. It's, uh, it's, 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 it says, say, once or twice. What? Super life. Super life spreads throughout the U.S. <laughs> Doing is they're checking in the Nate section because that's at Tony and Guy Beauty School in Modesto. We call it Piojos in Spanish. Guy Beauty School in Modesto. We do experience cases of life probably once or twice a week. Instructors are not only teaching students how to cut, color, and style hair, but are educating them on how to detect lice. I have them take a um, vertical parting straight down the nape of the neck. After scientists discovered the so-called super lice in more than half the country can't be killed with a chemical found in most over-the-counter treatments. No, it makes me kind of nervous, so I have two little ones, so <laughs> I don't want them. Look at that Becky. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Luella talking about the last story. His camera is like one megapixel. <laughs> yeah, I think that that was from seven years ago. What kind of phone? What kind of phone you drove down there? Man? I don't know, man. That's the, yeah, that's what the super head, super lights. I mean, I said super head. <laughs> Getting the gutter, in. Man. Rid. If you if you go if you're like for all you. Um, fellas that are uh, single and dating, if you go to a girl's house and you see that in the medicine cabinet, watch out. You see some red. <laughs> Pyrethroids, they say, used to work 100% of the time back in 2000, but by 2013, it only worked in about a quarter of the cases, which is why yeah. some are turning to a new treatment used by Lice Clinics of America. What is that? I didn't know humans could get lice, though. Oh, no, no, that? we can't get fleas. We can't get fleas. Yeah. yeah. Fleas. These yeah. Check that shit in elementary school. Yeah. Let me see. But Master Creator, you had a long hair, so they had to like, check a lot of hair. For me, it was just quick. Called Air Allay. It's FDA approved, costs $170, and may be covered by insurance. So over the counter drugs are still our first line of treatment because they're safer than the others. And also, they're very affordable. But while pediatricians like Dr. Elaine Soriano say prescription medication, nitpicking, and combing can. Nitpicking? I like that name. Nitpicking? Picking the nits? Still get rid of lice. So, treat them first with over the counter medication. And if that doesn't work, then you go down the what is the next step? They can be time consuming and may take multiple treatments. So she says prevention yeah. is the best line of defense. Yeah, look at what a uh, prevention is dopey white. <laughs> so I was like UL's comment black people don't get lice. <laughs> yeah, they There's can't live on that crown, man. man. <laughs> crown. I feel y'all. I feel y'all, man. The, the coils, those eat those uh, carbon coil curls. Yeah, it's all the type of oils he says. It's the type yeah, of oils they don't see. Okay. Like, man. Where all the food at, man? What this guy? Neanderthal DNA. I think it's definitely important to, to read up on it and at least educate yourself so you, you know. I, I can't stand those glasses, bro. How to prevent it. In Modesto, Linda Muma, KCRA <laughs> 3 News. So fucking dorky. Let's see. Uh, Let's see uh, popular videos. Modesto. Walk to Modesto. Right, we're going to do baby. one more video of Modesto, man. Okay. Got to be a good one. Yeah, I got Oh, I like this one. It's good. You will. Yeah, that commercial yeah, work, man. I want to I purchase that. You want to drink Invisalign, Invisalign is less ah. painful and less drama. <laughs> Indians number one. <laughs> Rip and cheerleaders clipped it from old, bro. Because it's from uh, 16 years ago. Yeah, they got, right. let's see. They got nine 
hundred thousand views. Rip and Chili right. suspended for showing bloomers. No ifs, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. The school administrator says six rip on high school cheerleaders crossed the line when one of the rambunctious routines went a little too far. The varsity cheerleaders admit that's not all they did. The you would clip suspended on the story, from school. Man. As KCRE threes the teeth. <laughs> the bloomers, man. The, or Daz reports the girls say they have no regrets about showing their school spirit and a little more during a big game. From this amateur video playing all over YouTube, it's what you don't see up close that got six Griffin cheerleaders in big trouble yeah, during halftime. We were making up our dance and we were just like, oh yeah, this is a really cute idea. Let's do it. Let's Last Friday, the girls. <laughs> Why are they doing even a, a news story on this for? That's what, I'm, that's what I'm saying. saying man. They be trying to make us throw up on these side missions, yeah, man. It's <laughs> it's by right With the bucket. Oh, Indians number right. one on their bloomers and lifting up their skirts at the end of what their the routine. A bloomer? That's when the vice principal, um, yeah. uh, Mr. Gokin, came over and told us that if we keep cheering, we'll get a two-hour detention. The girls say no ifs, ands, or buts about it. They did nothing wrong and kept cheering. That's when they received a surprise of their own, a two-day right there, bro. It's a honk if you... I mean, on to the next city, man. <laughs> city to city. Let's see. Well, let me put it on the right thing so you can see. I change your bloomers. Lying. I ain't lying. Change your bloomers. Okay. Generate. Oh, Pontiac, Michigan. Pontiac, Michigan. Population five fifty nine thousand. Damn, man. Reno the OG. Let's see. It's I my used last to think step. Oakland was a small city, but every city we went to was damn near less than a hundred thousand. What's the biggest one? Modesto? Uh, Hawthorne. Hawthorne was small, huh? Yeah, it was like eighty nine or something like that. Ninety thousand went too much. Okay, here we go. Pontiac, Michigan. We're not doing that one. Let's see. Uh, top news stories. Click on Detroit. No, it's not. Okay. Whoa. Oh, here's a good one. Play it on the screen, man. Oh, that's not, but that's not Michigan. Mm, man, this, this is a violent city, looks like, bro. All right, we at least got to see one, then we could be out. We're one or two, and we got okay. If you get too violent, okay. Oh, this is a good one a carjacking. Bro, I can't even see it, bro. You still got it on the, on the city generator. Oh, I do. My bad. A Belleville man is in jail tonight, accused of trying to steal a man's truck at a Wyandotte gas station. Video shot by a witness shows the man was caught and taken down within seconds. Nick Monticelli reports the quick end of this frightening situation had a lot to do with who happened to be nearby at the time. Nick? This is the tail end of an interesting ordeal in Wyandotte yesterday, all happening at this Marathon gas station at Biddle and Ford. Yeah, I was like, what's going on? I mean, in broad daylight. Nick Ray was pumping gas and saw the entire thing. Well, I seen the guy that was uh, trying to carjack the vehicle jump in the gentleman's uh, truck. And uh, the guy, the gentleman uh, was filling up his gas tank in the bed of his truck. He seen that, so he jumped on top of the guy. The 22 year old you see on the ground is the one who allegedly tried stealing this truck. And we're told he punched. Who do you think the woman is? His girlfriend? Yes, yeah, he's the only one trying to fight for him. Nah, he wasn't doing all that. He was just. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, you should have been with him anyway, you traitor. <laughs> the truck owner in the face. The gentleman in the black shirt is the owner of and the truck. Up, they and would the man. Start hitting him for no reason. So like, he was trying to. Steal my truck. That's why I'm beating him up. That's why I got to go down. <laughs> and in the white, that's an off-duty police officer. 
Oh. It happened in a split second. Oh, she looks very young. The guy was walking, looked like he cased it for just a second and jumped in. I mean, he wasn't using too much common sense right across from uh, the police department. Now, when we say this marathon gas station is pretty close <laughs> to the police department. It, is Nipsey Hustle on that? Shit. It's actually right across the street. And timing was perfect. As this was happening, an off-duty officer saw this, oh, ran yeah. over, and that's how the suspect got arrested. All of a sudden, from across the street, uh, off-duty uh, Detroit police officer came, identified himself and they uh, took the guy to the ground. The suspect is- Yeah, because you know none of the police officers live in their actual city. So a Detroit off-duty cop lives in Pontiac. Mm -hmm. From Belleville and will be in court tomorrow facing charges of at least unarmed attempted carjacking. Especially in front of the police department. Man, that, that woman was going through it. You see that? That was hard for her. <laughs> It was going to lock her man up. Yeah. Six oh two is your time, and we do want to get to this story this morning. It was a wild scene at a Detroit gas station that got... Look what she's wearing. Whoa! She pulled up the bleep. So intense. You see oh, a woman shit. there with a gun oh, just spraying bullets all over the Whoa. place at this west Damn, side Detroit gas station. Everywhere that got so intense you see a woman there with a gun just spraying bullets all over the place at this west side detroit gas station nick monticelli is following this story for us this morning and the good news about all this is that nick i understand that that woman is in police custody that woman is in police custody rhonda the detroit police Who's department issued that there? video last night saying they need what, uh it's the one in that car you see that in the car in the like this morning and the good news about the air to this story this morning it was a wild scene at a detroit gas station that got she so want to hit nobody she just wants to scare so you see a, a woman there with a gun just oh look she pointed at the window watch spring what Bullet. that's above the window no and the kickback look like it's all over above the window the place at this west right. side detroit to gas stand. station she to shoot nick monticelli is following the story her? for us this morning and the good like place it. at this west side detroit gas Hence, you see a woman there with a gun just spraying bullets all over the place at this west side Detroit gas mm -hmm. station. Nick Monticelli is following this story for us this she morning. Her own and car. the good news about all this is that Nick, I understand that that, that, that woman is in police custody. That car. woman is in police custody, Rhonda. The Detroit police. You think she was? Do she, 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 you think she actually shot her car? Yeah, because look, it looked like dude tries to stop her. And she looked like she was trying to shoot at dude. Detroit gas station. Nick Monticelli is following this story for us this morning. And the good news about all this is that Nick, I understand that that woman is in police custody. Czar to see somebody randomly shooting into a car with no care for human life. It is safe to say Detroit police are happy to have this woman in custody who fired. Do you see where she took the gun from, Massacrator? What the fuck? Her she had a strap. Already small. Yeah, look at Police are happy to have, look at have this one. You see? Uh, woman strapped in, around her thigh. She got custody. Yeah. Posters strapped Maybe around her thigh. It, it's in a G string. She was a cowgirl. There <laughs> several shots at a group of men. Early. Bro, she, she hoisted it. She holsters her gun in her G string, man. Sunday morning. It's safe to say to Detroit to police are happy to have this woman in custody in who fired several shots at a group of men. Early. He's like, my head's right there, stupid. Early Sunday morning. It happened just before 4.30 a.m. He tried to stop her and look, she pointed at him but pointed at her car too. And oh. shooting away. This car already has front end damage. Gas station <laughs> on the corner of Fenkel and Greenfield on the Finkel, make me at the corner of Finkel and Greenfield. She, she was going to kill everybody she was with. Detroit's west side. About to light up, light up this all, everybody in this bitch. That woman was spotted on camera talking to a group of guys outside of this blue Dodge Charger. <sighs> then the Green Pontiac Grand Prix pulls up. Please say whatever was said. Agitated the woman to the point that she rushes to the glove box to get a gun. Glove, huh? Her friend tries to stop her. That does not work. And the woman... Hides the gun in her underwear. Next, mm -hmm. another man tries to defuse the situation, but that is. You see the posture he took with his legs spread? 
in her underwear. <laughs> Next, another man tries to defuse the yep. situation, but that is when the woman starts shooting. The man pushes her hand away, and the woman's friend falls to the ground. Police say the oh, gunshot scared over. the driver of he did the, the grand the car. who almost oh, his, his finger, his leg. Yeah, you're right. Police say the gunshot scared the driver of the Grand Prix who almost ran over that woman's friend. The driver was hit multiple times. His friends somehow get the gun away from the woman and they take off. And less than 24 hours later, she is now locked up. It's oh. unclear if she was found and arrested or if she turned herself in. The things that can be caught on camera, that woman is scheduled to be arraigned facing a judge for the first time sometime in the future, it's going to be like quick, quick trial. But like, no, that women will be scheduled for execution tomorrow. <laughs> let's go. So let's get out of here. Let's get. It's kind of. Um, oh yeah, Pontiac, Michigan ain't doing it. Let's see. Pontiac, stop. Yeah. Everybody in the chat got a city they want to put in there, man. Yeah. Yeah, put your city. Chat, what up, chat? Put your city in the chat. So we can see what's going on. This is this is a funny clip right here. Pops. What? I ain't your poppy. Let me make sure I share it correctly. Check this out, creator. I've seen this. I've seen this one. You see this one? I kept calling him Poppy. Put it down! down. <laughs> what the I tell you? Down! Down! Put your hands behind your back. You're gonna. You guys, blood right there. Guns on you? No, Poppy. No, Poppy. No, Poppy. Do you think he looks suspicious? <laughs> <laughs> no, Poppy. It's your Poppy. Put your head down. No, go, no, no, go, Poppy. What do you got? Just that? Yes. Papi. Just marijuana? Yes. yes. Keep your hands there. Oh, you got no knife on you? No, papi, nothing. You sure? Yes, papi. I ain't your papi. Yes, officer. Yes, officer. You hear me? <laughs> yes. I hear you. <laughs> she was just about to say it again. <laughs> <laughs> I think later on he finds heroin on him. Where you coming from? I come from home. Turn around. Where's home? In front of the third right there, papi. You were in a project just now. What are you talking about, home? Don't lie to me. Where did you just come from? Uh -huh. From the project. From the project. Yes. Well, what are you doing? I was smoking the tobacco. The tobacco? You smoking the tobacco? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you yes, sure? Tobacco yes, rolled yes, blood, sure. man. Yeah. A little tobacco by his head. You want to go home, papi? Well, are you calling me papi again? By officer, Mr. Damiano. Again, you call me that. Don't call me Poppy again. All right, Poppy. All right, officer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, Poppy. Yes, yes, Poppy. Yes, Poppy. No, Poppy. Okay, it's generator. Generate the city of randomness. Who's that? I don't know who that is. Generate. Oh. Wichita, Kansas. Belly. You ever been to Wichita? Master Creator? Oh, you, did you see? Wichita, Kansas. You ever been? Nope. Nope. I just seen the movie Belly when they talk about it. Yeah. Wichita. Let's see. Yeah. I feel like my uh, phone did some weird shit. It did? Oh, cool. <laughs> Kate News. Uh oh, look at their news. This is their news. Look. Wait. Uh, stop. They're, they're big news. In one elementary school in Derby, there's a new vending machine right there for students. As Kate Strassland. A new vending machine. 
They talk about murdering people and people getting shot at the gas station in Detroit. Jiffer Decker shows us this isn't for chips or chocolate, but to nourish the mind. You won't find any snacks in this vending machine, but instead, books. It's how one elementary school in Derby is encouraging kids to read in a fun and creative way. I love this building. My heart is in this building. My heart is with these students. To Kara Sumner, Tanglewood Elementary is so much more than just where she works. Yes, please go check out this. For four years, she's had this vision for a book vending machine for the students to reward them when they meet their goals. When they do something amazing, which they do all the time, they have an opportunity to receive a token and that one token will let them get a brand new book. Friday afternoon, two students got to choose a brand new book from the Tiger Tales machine for helping out others. He's always thinking about other people and so it was nice for him to get rewarded for it. Sumner says it took so many with the school including the parent-teacher organization, to take an old vending machine, remodel it, and adorn it with the orange and black stripes. It's a pretty diverse uh, school, huh? You see that? <laughs> Is your phone working? Uh, that's the creator. He's gone. He's ghost. After all, this is Tanglewood. There was lots of research. We had to put new coin readers in. We had to purchase tokens and all this, but it was definitely a labor of love. Now the machine stands tall in the Tanglewood Library, stocked with books for all grades that students will get to pick up and not just check out. It really sparks the love of reading in a novel, enjoyable way. In Derby, Jocelyn Shepard Ecker, Cake News on your side. In one so that's, a, that's some good news. Let's, let's end on a good note on the uh, inaugural side missions episode live stream rewarding you for hanging out with us and going on these side missions now on to the main mission master creators on the on the main mission right now shout out to him the legend master creator 23 for his expertise navigation and commentary shout out to on code 24 7 npc the game for sure my eye on ai ul the human supercomputer and bgl had me rolling right so uh we're gonna see what this takes us so take a journey with us so you can see what we see all right. And uh, in the coming days, we will see you next Saturday night. Oh, he's here. Wait. He's back. <laughs> I was about to close it out. Your phone working now? Master Creator? Hello? The Master Creator? Let's see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Overlay the master creator. Let me know you you can hear. Let me know you can hear. Street said that God bless the gun with the most body. God bless sons with the most body. I seen dust heads scare everybody. I seen the devil die twice. I know where God is, where all of the graves be. Ancestors rest with me, my life all on the test. Who is the best? Ask mommy, ask mommy, ask mommy. You can ask mommy, ask mommy, yeah. Ask mommy, yeah. She made a legend, made a legend, yeah. Yeah, so we're going to keep continuing doing this, these side missions next week. As we do the main mission, get on our main mission and handle business. So we'll see you next time.
here on side missions with Master Creator 23 and Gabriel Carbo. Peace out. The life you live ain't like the life that I'm living. You never understand what's going on. No, the world you in ain't like the world that I live in. You never understand what's going on.